Patrick Jepson is the former private secretary to Princess Diana, and he joins us now with more. Patrick, welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. You know, this is such a moment in history. First of all, what was your reaction to King Charles's first public speech as the new monarch? Well, you know, London, where I'm speaking to you from, is tonight a city experiencing a very deep sense of grief, as indeed is the whole country. And that grief is mixed, not surprisingly, with a sense of gratitude for the life and service of the late Queen. And I think Prince Charles did a very good job of capturing those two emotions. And he added in a few other messages as well. And, and Patrick, I also want to ask you this. Uh, you were Princess Diana's private secretary during the time, of course, of Charles' publicized, well-publicized affair with uh, Camilla. How do you see that controversy and others the royal family has faced then and since then impacting his reign? Well, history is history. Uh, the royal family does like us to remember their glorious past, and here and there they would like us not to remember their less glorious moments. And I think this is going to be a continuing underlying challenge for the new reign. Um, people will look at Charles and Camilla, and many of us will also uh, imagine Princess Diana, remember her. It's ironic that Camilla was the third person in Diana's marriage. Now Diana, in many respects, is the third person in Charles's reign. Mm. And uh, that's just history. And although mm. uh, Camilla has achieved considerable success in being accepted by the public. I don't think that there's any um, suggestion that she's going to overshadow King Charles or be anything other than a uh, support and uh, a, a comfort in what is a lonely and uh, extraordinarily uh, dutiful destiny that he now has for the rest of his life. May I ask, Patrick, given that you were the former uh, private secretary to Princess Diana, what was that like to see, uh, particularly that moment where uh, King Charles III and uh, Queen Consort Camilla stopped outside Buckingham Palace to shake the hands of people who had gathered there to mourn or to greet uh, those mourners? Um, you know, given your own background, I just wonder personally what your reflections are in seeing that. Well, it's a very interesting comparison, isn't it, between mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> these public expressions of, of uh, grief at the death of the Queen and the extraordinary outpouring of emotion when Princess Diana died, which we marked 25 years ago this year. I think that at that time, there was quite a, an adverse reaction from some very uh, establishment sections in the, royal, in the royal business who thought that, that uh, the reaction to Diana's death was overdone. I don't hear those people saying that the reaction to the Queen's death is overdone. And in, in, in reality, I think it's a very healthy sign, both in the case of Diana's death and in the Queen's death. The monarchy is, after all, supposed to be uh, close to the people. It's supposed to embody the, all the human uh, frailties and strengths that, that we expect of ourselves. And I think this, this accessibility, this obviously relatability that we see with, with King Charles here is something that is entirely to be welcomed and is a good augury for the rest of his reign. And Patrick, given your experience and your time with Princess Diana, you also saw Prince William as a child. Of course, today, the, the, the bestowment of those titles that he is now the Prince of Wales. How do you think that he will take on his new role? We've seen with, with Prince William an extraordinary uh, maturity, I think, in his approach to his public duties. And now the day has arrived when he's really having to step up. In theory, well, God forbid, he could be the king tomorrow. He is now next in line. Uh, and uh, Duchess Catherine could be queen consort tomorrow. That is the mindset that he and his advisors now have to be in. It's how we were uh, when I was working for the Prince and Princess of Wales. We knew that at any minute they could uh, become king and queen. And now that responsibility, that burden has fallen to William and Catherine. I think the signs are that they will uh, rise to the challenge rather well. And if they continue to demonstrate this reassuring combination of the traditional and the and the innovative 
then that will put the House of Windsor in good hands for the foreseeable future. Patrick, we're hearing so many stories, uh, humorous stories, stories of warmth uh, in these remembrances of Queen Elizabeth. I wonder if you could share with us um, perhaps one of your favorite things or memories of Queen Elizabeth and the royal family. Well, in the eight years I worked for Princess Diana, um, my job as private secretary, among other things, was to make sure that the other households knew what we were doing and uh, were, as far as possible, in support of what we were doing. And it was of paramount importance to me to make sure that the Queen knew that Princess Diana was an asset to, to the monarchy, not in any sense a threat. And I think the Queen recognised that. After uh, I resigned from, from uh, working for the Princess, after the notorious uh, panorama Bashir scandal, I was received by the Queen. And I was immensely heartened and reassured and comforted by the extent to which she had understood a lot of the pressures that I had been under during the eight years I was in that post. It was a wonderful realization that although she might at times have been a rather remote uh, uh, figure at the head of the, of the family, she actually knew what was going on in every corner of her world. Hmm. Compassionate and astute. Patrick Jepson, thank very you very good. much for joining us. Pleasure.